Howdy gamers, let's talk about the runes for Hecarim, Jungle, and Top Lane. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the most about Hecarim as he's a pretty unique champion and he only really comes out of the woodwork whenever he's like obscenely overpowered. And uh, with the, he's like one of the few retro champions like in the game still. If you, if you, like even if you just look at his splash art, like he's gonna be re reworked pretty soon. But anyways, with the top lane, um, your best option is Conqueror. And even in the jungle, you're gonna be seeing Conqueror a bit. So with Conqueror, you gain stacks of Adaptive Force whenever you auto attack or hit an enemy with a spell. So with with Hecarim, you'd be either using your EQ, the W, etc. So you can stack it up like really, really quickly for Hecarim. And then in in the duration of it all in, it has pretty good synergy with how Hecarim wants to play out a fight where he's spending his HP early to build up his Q stacks. And then once he has an all-in angle, he can spend his ult, his E, etc. And... All the damage dealt afterwards is going to be healing him. Since he has healing in his W as well, it has pretty natural synergy there. And since you just have so much loaded damage in his in the rest of his kit, um, the extra adaptive force is going to go a long way. Especially like if you land a fully charged up E on the uh, enemy top laner. For the secondary runes, um, your good options are in Triumph or Presence of Mind. If you're really feeling like... Um, uh, like greedy as fuck, I guess Presence of Mind is going to give you okay value as... Um, with with pre with Hecarim, especially like if you're side laning a lot, you can run out of mana. And w basically, with Presence of Mind, you can kind of just skip building an extra mana item past Sheen. Um, but usually, Hecarim doesn't want to do that. And in a lot of the melee matchups, you're going to be like picking them into in the first place. Champions like Irelia and whatnot, like Frozen Hearts, just going to be your best bet. It recently got buffed, but like Hecarim's one of the few champions that can actually use that item to a good degree, anyway. So. More often than not, you probably want Triumph. With Triumph, your takedowns are going to restore 12% of your missing health and then grant you an additional 20 gold. And that's about all you can ask for, as having that extra HP restore um, goes naturally with like your all-in as you're spending your HP early. You all-in, and then if that all-in is successful, then you actually survive it. And through surviving it uh, in a 2v2, 3v3, or even 5v5 situation, then you're going to be able to stay um, in the fight, still with your Q stacked, and then be pretty useful as... If your Q is fully stacked and you've killed one target, then you're probably winning, and it lets you just go on go on to snowball that fight even further. For the third runes here, um, like attack speed isn't a bad option, as weird as that sounds. Um, where a lot of the champions you'd be fighting in the top lane are bruisers, you do have time to auto attack them like in between your Q cooldown. With tenacity, like if you're not playing into any CC in the top jungle matchup, then Maybe you could just skip the Legend Tenacity rune altogether. So when you can, run attack speed. And then when, let's say if you're playing into champions like Ornn, Zac Jungle, maybe even Zac Top Lane, um, with, if the bot side picks champions like Senna, Thresh, um, Nautilus, Leona, etc., maybe run, maybe consider running Tenacity as obviously you get more value out of the Tenacity whenever there's actually CC on the enemy team. But if you don't have to run it, the attack speed does give you some okay value on Hecarim as a lot of what your combo is is just Q autoing over and over again. And if you have the more attack speed, it's just simply um, getting the attack off faster or getting more off throughout the duration of an all-in. With the third rune here, you have okay options in Coupe de Grasse or Last Stand. Um, with Coupe de Grasse, you deal 8% more damage to champions who are below 40% health. And then with Last Stand, you deal more damage based on uh, how low you are. So this is pretty matchup dependent. And I'm going to be honest again, I just don't know Hecarim's Hecarim top lanes like winning and losing matchups where you do probably run ignite as well in the top lane like I figure you would just get a lot easier value out of Coupe de Grasse with most champions in the top lane um, last stand comes into play whenever you're playing against champions that you do have to just beat down more because they simply live longer so champions like Mordekaiser is the best example where you're not going to straight up burst him in a lot of situations so probably into tank matchups you take last stand and then into probably every single other matchup, ranged matchups or bruiser matchups, probably Coupe de Gras for Hecarim. And then if you want to default, Coupe de Gras is probably going to give you your better value. For the secondary runes, um, if you're playing in top lane, I think you should be playing to cheese as hard as possible. So if you're running the Teleport plus Ignite, you're going to get the best value out of Nimbus Cloak and Celerity. Um, with Nimbus Cloak, after you cast a Summoner spell, you gain bonus movement speed increase that lasts for 2.5 seconds and allows you to pass through units. The increase is uh, based on the cooldown of the Summoner spell, so you're not going to get the max value out of Ignite, but with Teleport or even if you're running Flash top lane, then you would be. 
So Nimbus Cloak is going to help you with your TPs and then in your all-ins in the top lane if you're running Ignite on Hecarim. So um, even if you have to use it defensively, let's say you're getting ganked, um, then you could Ignite the jungler and run away, something like that. So there is extra utility in it. But with the bonus movement speed offered with Hecarim, any extra movement speed he's getting is going to be converted into attack damage. So it has pretty natural synergy with that. And with Hecarim too, he needs to stick on top of the target. So not only are you getting extra damage, but you're getting uh, the extra movement speed to deal more damage from Nimbus Cloak. So has really good synergy with this kit. And honestly, since it's there, you might as well run it. I, I really don't think there'd be something that outweigh it for the top lane in the runes. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, man. So second rune would be Celerity in the Sorcery Tree. Celerity, all movement speed bonuses are 7% more effective and you gain an additional 1% movement speed. The extra movement speed from this isn't so wild. It's mostly about maintaining the extra movement speed once you gain it because in a lot of top lane matchups, they either have stuns or slows, etc. So maintaining the movement speed is going to make it so that you can either stay on top of the target or um, in a defensive situation, actually get away from them when you need to. So that's that. And again, it has pretty okay values with uh, Hecarim. I don't know the math behind it, and I'm honestly not going to look into it as I do think he's going to be reworked sometime this season. But I mean, it's there. It's useful. Um, the more movement speed, the more damage. It's uh, <laughs> it's something, man. For the adaptive runes, um, it's going to be attack damage, attack damage, and then depending on your matchup, you do want to switch up the resistances. So if you're playing into Camille Irelia, you want the armor, and then if you're playing into um, champions like Rumble, uh, Mordekai, etc., you want the magic resist. So this would be the top lane page, and I don't think the other runes would outweigh it in the top lane as you just simply get the most damage um, from from just the runes in this. Um, everything else that you would need, such as like defense or um, utility, is going to come through your itemization and is easier. Um, yeah, is easier to obtain through itemization for Hecarim, in my opinion. So yeah, it, like you could run something like bone plating and maybe overgrowth, but it's easier just to get that 150 health from a ruby crystal and then the extra damage reduction through your resistances come mid to late game. So that's that. For the jungle page, you could still go conquer. It'd be completely fine. You'd have a you'd have about the same page. And um, depending on the secondary runes, uh, for jungle, I suppose you'd get better value out of Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking, as you would um, get you would obviously be able to have the more movement speed for your initial ganks whenever you're going to gank a lane through the river and then with nimbus cloak you would it'd be proccing on your smite pretty similar to top lane with your ignite and then same thing with your flash if you're running that in the jungle if you're running ignite plus smite in the jungle um you would still be getting pretty okay value out of out of nimbus cloak you do have the option of something like um i guess zombie ward and relentless hunter um you'd be getting uh about 18 attack damage from this and then the extra out of combat movement speed would give you more burst on your initial hit but the utility of these two i don't think it would outweigh especially where a lot of what you'd be doing is full like just farming a lot and then fighting around objectives with hecarim water walking is going to be giving you more value when you're fighting at those times and you'd be getting about the same amount of ad that you'd get from zombie ward and then once you're out of, once you've landed like that initial E onto someone, you lose the bonus AD from the Relentless Hunter. Versus with Nimbus Cloak, it can basically always be up um, while you're fighting. So, that's that. I don't think Freeboot's Cosmic Insight would outweigh um, something like this, but maybe I'm just not sure. If you're playing Hecarim Jungle, though, you same same sort of thing as top lane. If you're playing Hecarim Jungle, you. You might as well just be playing for like these cheese ganks anyway, so Predator is going to allow you to do that better. And if you're running Predator, your best bet is uh, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and then probably Relentless Hunter. Um, and Genius Hunter is not bad, as a lot of what, like your gank cooldown is basically predicated on the, um, on the Predator cooldown. And with Relentless Hunter, it's going to give you more movement speed, which can equate to the bonus AD, but with uh, Predator, you're going to get that bonus movement speed anyway, so um, I would recommend Ingenious Hunter over it as if you're just playing for the ganks anyways, that's going to give you um, more cooldown reduction on the Predator boots, and then that's going to allow you to just simply have more ganks afterwards. 
And then for the secondary runes, um, I mean, you would have an okay option if you're running something like this with Futures Market and Cosmic Insight, as Cosmic Insight's going to give you 5% cooldown reduction on your abilities, summoner spells, and um, items. So it's also going to be reducing cooldown of Predator, it's going to be reducing the cooldown of Smite and then Ignite if you're running it, and then with Futures Market, it's going to allow you to just get items that you otherwise couldn't get at faster, uh, faster timings. So it's going to allow you to complete the jungle item, um, the boots faster, etc. If you were looking to, if you were looking to like amplify just getting all your gold through ganks, this would be your best setup, as it just gives you more ganks faster. With cheap shot, um, it's going to give you bonus true damage on your uh, whenever you damage an enemy with impaired movement or action. So this would be right as you land your E, um, your ult, or the blue smite. Then that's going to be when you'd get your damage from cheap shot. You like Relentless Hunter might sound okay, but with Cheap Shot, it's just more consistent, and the true damage offered is um, going to be more generally useful than just the burst added from Sudden Impact. Because once you've initially used your dash on the enemy, Sudden Impact is effectively on cooldown. Um, but it's not a terrible rune, just has a bit lower utility, and then. If you were just playing for the ganks, a lot of these secondary runes from Precision kind of lose value as it's mostly just about having the Predator off cooldown versus having like extra damage on targets that are low or having the extra attack speed. Um, and then you could kind of just give up the utility of these two compared to the Conqueror page. The Conqueror page would be looking to farm and then have a lot of utility um, uh, for fights around objectives, but with this it would just be about getting as many ganks off as possible. and. You wouldn't need the extra movement speed through river if you just simply have like unfair amounts of movement speed with predator in the first place so you would be losing value with that and then kind of the same thing with nimbus cloak um as once you're on top of them with predator if you haven't initially bursted them then the fights usually disengage so it's not so much about staying on top of that same target as it is dealing as much damage as possible like once you uh er originally get on top of them so if you're gonna play them in the jungle i suppose is uh, this would be what I'd recommend. If you're looking to gank, the Conqueror page would be more for farming, but then if you're looking to farm, you might as well play champions like Karthus, Orn, uh, Nocturne, etc. Like, just easier options and whatnot, but that's that. I might be completely off as, again, I'm just really not sure about Hecarim, man. He's such a unique champion, and I really can't be asked to, like, put a lot of research into it as I have done in the other rune videos, as I just think he's getting reworked, and his most potent role is the top lane. And I think I cover the top lane to a pretty good degree. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do answer literally all of them. And if this video helped you, leave a like on the video. helps me. If you think I'm wrong or have like some insight to share, like just let me know in the comments, man. Or contact me in any, on any of the social media that I have. And if you're interested in seeing me play some League of Legends or talk about it some more, check out my Twitch. It's in the description. Twitch.tv slash sorry Nelson. Bye-bye. Hecarim. He was cool mid lane. Remember Home Guards? He was really good then. But yeah, you obviously don't see him now because you could pick Graves, man. Why, why bother?